Hello, everyone, and welcome back to DSP versus the Internet for the 12th of August, 2024, episode 77. This is part four, I believe. Now, here's the thing. Guess what? For the first time in ages, we can actually now begin to watch the submissions tier videos in an actual random order. And we might say, what do you mean? What do you mean actual random order? Last year, YouTube changed the app of YouTube on Xbox and random no longer worked. It literally did nothing. It would just keep playing them in order. Now I can actually shuffle a playlist because I'm using my new PC. So because of that, not only are we seeing higher quality of the video, I can control them better and we get real random order. So we've got big improvements to the show because of this new PC. I mean, tons of improvements to my content this week. So again, thank you to the fan who donated me a freaking gaming PC this week. Amazing. All right. And, uh, Let's do it. Let's see what's true. Something about the food pyramid. What went wrong with the food pyramid? I wasn't aware anything was wrong with the food pyramid. So I guess let's find out. Here we go. Quite possibly the go-to example of why you can't trust everything you hear oh, when it comes to on. nutrition. It has been the go. butt of the joke for literally decades because of how seemingly backwards it is in its presentation and recommendations for how to have a healthy diet. Now, huh. there are a few theories as to why the food pyramid is structured the way that it is. Many people believe that the food industry's research is flawed, and I feel like to a certain point that is not negotiable with overlapping and contradictory studies that often feel cherry-picked to push a certain way of eating. And many go a step further and believe that there is corruption in the food industry, with businesses and organizations <laughs> slipping money under the table to push certain products being called healthy. And It's just, it's crazy because over my lifetime, I swear, right, as I'm growing up, I hear, uh, eggs are good for you. Eggs are like the best possible thing. You should eat a lot of eggs, right, in your diet. It's going to be great for you. And then I swear at one point in my heart, eggs are bad for you, high in cholesterol, terrible for you why would you eat eggs and then later on again eggs are good for you now we know it's good cholesterol not bad cholesterol so you should eat a lot of eggs again and then there'll be like another story it's like it never the story's never consistent it's like they change these nutritional recommendations over time did you know that chicken causes cancer Ooh, chicken causes cancer yes yeah, so does everything humans are not meant to be you know living forever we're going to die someday. It's part of the human condition. You got to deal with it. Everything is going to eventually lead to your inevitable death. So telling me not to eat chicken because I have a 0.0000001% that a freak thing will happen. I'll get cancer because I ate some chicken. It's ridiculous, right? You're more likely to walk outside and a car is going to hit you in the middle of the street rather than die from getting cancer from eating chicken, right? So... <clears throat> I, that's what I mean. Like some of these things, these studies are sensationalist or like he's saying, a lot of the times they're probably trying to push a narrative, make you feel like this product today is healthy. So you'll buy more of it. They're trying to influence you, right? On the flip side, there being products that have been unfairly deemed unhealthy through similar means. This being said, I'm not really here to talk about all that. It just doesn't really interest me. No, I want <laughs> to talk about the results, the recommendations, and the pyramid itself. The food pyramid was originally intended to be a visual representation of how many servings of each type of food was recommended to be eaten per day for a healthy, balanced diet. It wasn't the first major attempt at this, but it is the most well known. And over the years, it's gone through some pretty dramatic changes as well. So before huh. I feel like we can add a we judge it we should first go through the history of the food pyramid should i can i be honest does anyone even know that the food pyramid was changed i was taught about the food pyramid when i was a kid in like like elementary school grammar school as they called it i wasn't even aware it ever changed i thought it was the same so it's kind of weird because like it was ingrained in me as a kid the food pyramid like i could tell you you know what the order and everything but now it's not right so now we're now we're supposed to have now we're supposed to be shocked. Oh, my God. The food pyramid's wrong. We've been lied to our whole lives. <laughs> oh, no. I've done it all wrong. I'm 42 years old. It's too late for you to tell me this now. You should have told me this when I was in my 20s as young and spry, and I could have, I could have changed things. It, the food pyramid has poisoned me. Pyramid, How could you? And then discuss what went wrong. The very first food pyramid was released in Sweden in 1974. It was created ah. by Anna Britt Agensader, who at oh. the time worked for a Swedish grocery cooperative. It was a response to the 1943 USDA's Basic 7 Food Guide, which was designed to help people ration food during World War II. Make sure oh. to note that nutrition was not at the top of their criteria. Agensader's main goal seemed to be to divide food in a way that would represent how much a person should eat of each of them. Telling people to eat more of the foods from the bottom of the pyramid 
pyramid, the widest okay. section, and not as much of the foods in the top, the narrowest <laughs> section. Her food pyramid was Excuse divided me. into three levels. The bottom tier being grains, legumes, potatoes, and milk. The yes. middle tier being fruits and vegetables. And the top tier being meat, fish, and eggs. Over the years, there were a few other government dietary guidelines like the hassle-free daily food guide See, and the- That's not even the one I was taught. Mine had stuff like sugars and candies and treats at the top. So let's see if there's like an updated one. Food wheel. But in 1992, the USDA decided they wanted in on the pyramid action. It was the first food guide to use consumer research and was designed with the intention of illustrating three key concepts, variety, moderation, and proportion. This food pyramid was divided into four levels with recommended okay. servings per day and is as follows. That is the, this is the one I learned. Cause yeah, I was in, in school at this time. 92, I would have been 10 years old. So this totally makes sense that this is the one that I learned. Okay. The bottom tier, <laughs> grains, where they recommended 6 to 11 servings a day. The second tier, fruits and vegetables, with 2 to 5 servings of each a day. The third tier, protein and dairy, with 2 to 3 servings of each a day. Protein here including meat, poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, and beans. And the top tier being sweets, fats, and oils, which were recommended to be eaten sparingly. Not so already they already changed it because the original one... They had the legumes and stuff was at the bottom tier, but they broke that out, and now they've included that in the protein tier. They separated dairy because dairy used to be in the bottom tier. Now they got it all the way up at the top tier. That's probably because of the fat content in dairy, I would assume. <clears throat> I don't know, 6 to 11 servings of grain? Doesn't that sound like a ton? I guess it depends on what they consider a serving because their servings are so dumb. You'll eat, like, one slice of bread. They'll be like, you just had four servings. Like, what the hell are you talking about? It's one slice of bread. That's meant to be, like, one portion. So if you have a sandwich that's two servings of bread, that would make sense. Oh, no, that's, like, seven servings. No, it's not. It's too stupid. Like, I don't understand the whole serving measurement. It's confusing. Sometimes there's juice, right? That's, like, fruit and veggie juice. And it'll be like, if you drink a cup of this, this is the same as, like, three servings. Like, it's a cup. That should be one serving. How could that be three servings? What the fuck is a serving? Who serves you your own food? Who serves you food? Your mom? I serve myself food? Is it a serving? Why do we call it a serving? Why don't we call it a portion? Why wouldn't it be a certain number of portions of each kind of food a day, not a serving? That would make more sense. That's it. We're destroying the food pyramid right now. Someone give me a sledgehammer. I'm going to smash this fucking thing. Because this is bullshit. It's too confusing. It should be portions and it should be sensible portions like a slice of bread is one portion okay i've said that's my decree not long after okay. several other countries adopted this model in 2005 <laughs> the usda introduced a new dietary model called my pyramid where the pyramid was this time divided vertically with varying widths of stripes what the fuck representing is that? proportions to try to rid of confusion how are you supposed to understand that this is supposed to rid you of confusion this mess this looks like someone opened up your cabinet and just spilled your shit all over the floor. And I'm supposed to understand this chart? This chart is horrible. I mean, to the right, it looks like a fucking flip-flop or something, right? It looks like a fucking, you know, a sandal. Well, I don't eat sandals, so I'm glad that's one of the smaller portions, okay? This looks sh like shit. ...of importance. Apparently before, many people thought the pyramid was a priority huh. scale and not a portion one. Thus, people prioritized grains and fruits and vegetables, often opting out of protein-rich foods altogether. The stripes <laughs> this time were different colors to be more visually appealing and illustrated a person climbing up the pyramid to subconsciously encourage physical activity. That's... Battle looks like you're supposed to walk all over your food. Yeah, what you're supposed to do, you climb the stairs, and then you do a giant swan dive on top of the food. You just make a giant explosion mess. That's what this is supposed to be, right? Activity. Then in 2011, the like, pyramid was... This looks like a bad Double Dare minigame or something, right? Where, like, the kids have to jump into a pile of food and find the flag at the bottom to win, like, a, 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 a huffy bike or something. Thrown out altogether in favor of my plate, using a plate as the visual mark. None of you understood the Double Dare reference, did you? That's pretty dated. Okay. Anyway. Revealed by then First Lady what Michelle is Obama and Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, it divides no! the plate up between fruits, vegetables, grains, and protein. With a Look at this. What? No, first of all, okay, now I really got to call this out. It's dinner time, okay? At my dinner, I always have a protein. So let's say it's chicken. I have a grain. Okay, what would the grain be? Uh, I don't know, some potatoes. A vegetable. Sure. Like, let me green beans, some corn. Fruit? Fruit? You eat apple with dinner? 
you eat grapes, a side of grapes, what would the fruit be? Like, I think tomato is a fruit, but like, there's when you eat dinner, there's always a grain portion, a protein portion, and some kind of a plant, usually a vegetable. When do you ever eat fruit with your dinner? Right? As a snack, okay. Not with dinner. My plate, your plate's fucked up. No one puts eats fruit with your dinner and dairy. So I have to drink a cup of milk with my dinner. I've never had a cup of milk with my dinner. I used to have a cup of milk with lunch or like in breakfast, you have cereal with milk. I never had a dairy drink for dinner. Dinner, you have like juice. You know what I mean? Like you have a fruit juice, a vegetable juice, something like that. If you're an adult, you can enjoy a cup of wine, glass of wine. When you eat, you drink dairy with dinner. It, let's be honest here. If you ate a protein, a grain, a vegetable, a fruit, and you chugged a glass of milk with dinner, you'd be shitting yourself for the next fucking hour. You'd be running for the toilet. You just put such a freaking mess in your stomach. There's no way it's going to process all of that properly at once. Who's going to eat all that? Mich this is Michelle Obama designed this. Oh, okay. All right, got it. She's the master dietitian, right? A small circle on the side for dairy. Now, credit where credit is due, this does, in my opinion, do a better job of portraying portions as it represents an actual meal, something they apparently struggled with for about 20 years. Maybe, maybe that's why uh, Michelle Obama's so skinny, because she's always running to the bathroom shitting after dinner, because she ate four of these things plus a glass of milk, and her body can't process it, it just immediately purges. So, so she never puts on any weight. She doesn't retain any food. They also rid of sugars and fats and oils, believing they don't have a necessary place in a healthy diet. There were also a few other more <laughs> advice-like specific guidelines, including to make half your grains whole grains, to vary your vegetables and protein, and to choose lower fat dairy and protein options. My I can't even watch this. this. No, I can't even watch this anymore. This is so convoluted. Do you explain this to a child? A child is supposed to know what this means? Look at this. This looks like a science textbook like an elaborate formula to create something. You know what I'm saying? Like, this looks like fucking high-end math and shit. Like, the kid's like, I just want to eat. Can I just eat something, Mom? Can you make me, some, can you make me a cheeseburger? And the mom's like, no. The cheeseburger's only grains, protein, and dairy. You need your fruit and veggies. So we got to put a banana on your burger, and we have to also put some lima beans in there. No, wait. Lima beans is protein. Sorry. We need vegetable. What would a vegetable be? Uh... A radish. We'll throw a radish on your burger, right? Like, what are you talking about? This is stupid. <laughs> I'm done with this. I'm done with this video. We're going to the next video. That's enough of that nonsense. It was stupid. The food pyramid was fine. If you were to open up your fridge or pantry and pull out any food package, when you flip Wait a it over... No, 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 no. That's not right. That's not in my playlist. It already kicked me out of the playlist? Now, hold on a second. That's not good. Oh, the I was food in the playlist. Quite possibly the... Oh, I didn't hit loop. That's on me. If you hit loop, then it brings you back to your same playlist. That's my fault. So now if I hit next. If you were to open up your fridge or pantry and- It still doesn't work because I fucked it up. All right, Oh, the on. food pyramid. Let's try something here. So if I go here and I click, let's say I click on this one. I hit pause. So I'm going to hit loop. Wait. Loop playlist. And then shuffle playlist. Now if I hit next. This is not exactly. Okay, it worked. That's on me. I was supposed to hit loop to go back to the same playlist. If it's the last video, it's going to kick you out. That's on me. Okay, I screwed it up. But now we got it working. Okay, King 5 Seattle three days ago. This is like near me. A Cal oh, never mind. It's a California teacher. I don't know why this is King 5 Seattle reporting on a California school. That's kind of stupid. What you think of yeah. when you hear teacher's pet. Right. A California teacher was preparing her elementary school classroom when a bear <laughs> came strolling in, cool. making itself right at home. The nice. teacher and her husband managed to lure the bear out of the building safely. They did? The thing is, it's sadly, you have that's... to hold the door open for it to stay open. So when he was holding the door open, that's when uh, he called the bear's attention, and then uh, the bear went by him, like, within a foot. <laughs> Wait a minute. How did the bear get in? If it's a school, the door should be closed. You shouldn't have open door on a school, right? Because anything can get in. The, the doors aren't closed on this school. Don't tell me this is one of these schools that like has a bad budget, so they only have AC in the summer, so they have, to have all the windows and doors open to keep the building cool, cool, and then fucking animals are coming in there. Like, how did the bear get in there? Right? <laughs> you think a kid let it in? A kid's like, hey, come on in. 
there's no way we're having class with a bear in there. Actually, actually, that's pretty, uh, that might be an interesting new tactic. A way to skip class. Just let wild animals into the school. Because there's no way you could have class if there's like, you know, if there's like a fucking, like a mountain lion in the back of the class. The teacher's probably not going to teach the class. And then, you know, they take time to get it out of there, so you skip your class. Oh, all right. Maybe that's what it was. <clears throat> huh. Thankfully, there was no damage to the room, except for one of the classroom's earthquake kits that contained, of course, snacks. School staff then reviewed safety measures with the first day of class about a week away. Definitely do not want a bear stroll in. Oh, that's right. It's the middle of the summer. There is no class right now. Maybe they just did have everything open because there's no kids in there. But, I mean, that's scary. I mean, you got to ask the question, all right? Why is a bear coming into a classroom? That's bad. That means that probably the bear's natural habitat has been encroached upon. So now it has to kind of stretch itself out in the radius of where it looks for food. And now it's going to start coming into the city and stuff. That's bad. They should investigate why that happened. Because the bear should not be just walking into a human building like that, right? <laughs> to eat the children. Well, as of now, we haven't had any, like, bear feasting epidemics in the United States, to my knowledge. Like, there's nothing wrong with the bear doing its own thing. And obviously, if you see a bear, you should leave it alone. But it shouldn't be walking into the human building. Like, what happened? Is it, you know, did they, did they, did some idiotic developer decide to develop, you know, a, a, a 10 block radius of buildings and shit in the middle of where it would have been a forest where this bear would have lived? And now it has nowhere to go, so it has to, like, go to the city to look for food and stuff. It's kind of weird, no? Hmm. Oh, well, well, at least it happened when there was no kids there. Okay, next video. <clears throat> oh, this is Sakurai! It's Mr. Sakurai! Sakurai-san. So if you don't know, this was the guy who was the head developer of Smash Brothers for a very long time. The Super Smash Brothers series for the Nintendo consoles. And most notably known... The fact that he was such a vocal and very interactive guy with the gaming community. So they really like the guy. But it's what's funny about this guy. At the end, right? At the very end of him making uh, the Smash Brothers games. He literally came out and said he didn't want to do it anymore. Because the, the community was like so in his face about every little thing. About the game and every change and everything. And always asking him, what's the next character and shit? He was like so relieved. So relieved to not have to fucking make the games anymore. And he's like, I can't wait to move on to the next chapter of my life. So what he's been doing, he's been making YouTube videos. I've never seen them, but this will be the first one that I ever check out. So let's see what he's talking about. Marketing? Okay. 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 For example, if you're a content creator on the internet, right? And you're going to make your content, but the first thing you do is you dye your hair bright blue and you talk and scream in like a cartoonish voice, you know your target market is children, right? Or let's say, for example, you would put on sunglasses and a big fake wig and a big a vest and a big like neon color, like a red shirt, and you act like you're like a discount G.I. Joe, and you talk stupid and you act like an idiot on your streams, you understand that your target audience is children, right? That's what he's saying. He's like, know who your target audience is. When you make content, it's the same as being a, a Nintendo game developer. You have to know who the test who the <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Age, gender, and taste, okay. That's interesting. How would, how would Nintendo get that data? Like, you don't know who bought your game, do you? How would you even know that? If someone goes physically to the store and buys it, I mean, let's say, for example, uh, Super Mario Wonder that just came out last fall. I bought it, and I'm 42 years old. Well, I was 41 years old at the time. But kids probably wanted it, and so their parents bought it for them. But is that a, a purchase by the adult, or is that a purchase by the child? Most children would never buy a game. Someone buys it for them. So how would you tell who the intended target audience is for the game that you develop 
if all the sales data just shows a bunch of adults buying it? And also, how would you ever know from the point of sale transactions? Like, if you go to the store and buy it, how would you know who bought it? How would you get that data? Um, I mean, for that matter, even online purchases, how would you know who it is that bought that game? I mean, you know the name, but you don't necessarily know any information about that person, do you? I wonder. I wonder how they get their how they get their sales data. そして、そこに狙いを定めて、あるいは弱いそう補って、え、商品を売るのがターゲットマーケット、エグザクトリー。そしてその傾向を調べるのがマーケティングです。本来もっと広い意味ではありますが、ざっくり言えばということで。でも
his subscription subscriptions on YouTube skyrocket as an actual result of this very deceptive, very, very predatory practice. Then he realizes, well, I can do other predatory things to children and I can get away with them and I'll just profit. So then he does things like he sells merch and says, I'll sign every shirt. And he doesn't. Other people forge his signature. And then he has like, you know, these like fun to thought. Oh, buy the merch. And there's a chance if you buy a piece of merch that I'll actually put like a hundred dollar bill in the merch. So people spend insane amounts of money on the merch, hoping that there'll be money in the merch that they buy. You see? So it is. He's right. Previous action, successful campaign. Now we know how to design further campaigns based off of the successful action of the previous campaign. You see? Uh, I do feel like I've been distracted. I think we should end this one and we should continue on with the next video in the next part. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for watching DSP versus the internet. I'll see you in the next part. <laughs>